Hello and welcome back to the course on Power BI. In today's tutorial, we're going to add some character to our map. We're going to change the sizes of these uh, circles and we're going to add some color. And in addition to all of that, we're going to also learn a new feature in Power BI, which is calculated measures and how that is different to calculated columns. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we're going to add sizes to our circles. So we're going to differentiate them by sizes. And uh, as the size, we're going to select the sales for the associated geography. So let's go ahead and drag sales, or let's open first of all uh, the fields here and drag sales into size. Uh, right away, the sizes of the circles have changed. Now, what we want for the uh, color of the circles is the profit margin in the associated region. However, uh, we don't have the profit margin here in our um, data set and that is fair enough because our data set is at the order ID or actually item level um, in this case in in the case of um, this um, table it's at the item level and since it's joined to this table there the whole thing is at the item level now uh, how would we be able to calculate the profit margin at the level of a region if our data set is at item level. And this is where the calculated measures will come in handy and help us out. So let's learn about calculated measures. I've prepared some slides. Let's go through them. All right. Calculated columns versus measures. We've already discussed calculated columns. So this is going to help us understand how calculated measures are different. So let's imagine that we've got our data set and on the left, we've got all these rows. So every blue block here or a rectangle represents a row. Now, what happens when we uh, aggregate our data is certain rows are combined together. So for example, in our uh, case, uh, they might be in the same region. So some of them might be in UK, some of them might be in Germany, some of them might be in France, and they'll be aggregated together. So they are aggregated. And for example, in the case of sales, which we just put onto our map, they're summed up. So all of the rows relating to uh, a certain region are added up together and then rows relating to another region are added together and so on. And then they're displayed on the map. So as you can see here, the red ones would be the UK, green ones, Germany, orange ones, France. And that's just a hypothetical example. Of course, the number of rows doesn't have to be three per geography. It can be different, can be varying and so on. But this is the main concept that we have data at the row level. Then we have a data that is aggregated to the uh, level of granularity of our visualization. And finally, the data is displayed on our visualization. Now, uh, what are calculated columns which we have discussed previously in this course? Well, let's imagine that we have some data in uh, these red rows. So let's say 10, 20, 50, 100, 400, 150. And the numbers on the left are the profit uh, for the sales of each item. So uh, $10 profit and uh, $100 sales, so the, uh, the number on the right is sales. And then $20 profit, $400 in sales. So basically, uh, the item uh, was sold at $400, but the profit is only $20 because uh, there was a certain expense associated with purchasing the item in the first place, or with the shipment of the item, or with uh, the marketing of the item, and things like that. So there's the profit, and there's the sales. Now, the aggregation in this case, what it does is it adds up the profit and adds up the sales. So we've got sum of profit, which is 80, 10 plus 20 plus 50, and sum of sales, which is 650. 100 plus 400 plus 150 gives us 650. And what we visualized as the size of the bubble uh, on our map was the sum of sales, which is pretty straightforward. To, uh, up until this point, everything uh, is um, quite straightforward and uh, very uh, intuitive. But next, what we want to do is, let's say we want to uh, create a calculate column. So something we've talked about before. And this is a very simple procedure. Basically, we calculate something, um, a column based on our existing columns, and we add it to our data. And here is a calculate column, which represents profit divided by sales for each individual row, which equates to the profit margin. So in the first case, for the first sold item, the profit margin is 10% or 0.1. Uh, for the second one, it's 0 0.05. Uh, for the third one, it's 0 0.33. And that's also fair enough. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. Just divide one column by the other and add this synthetic column into our data set. Wonderful. Um, but now, what, what will happen with this additional column when this whole data set is aggregated? 
Well, now we're going to have a new uh, aggregation, which is the sum of the calculated column. Or hypothetically, it's, it's not going to be there, but we can, uh, if we want to, we can add that to a visualization. We can add up this column just we, as we did with profit or as we did with sales. But the thing with, cal with um, uh, the profit margin is that it doesn't make sense to add up the profit margin for each individual item, right? So if you had more items, you could come out, you could easily get a profit margin of over 100%. And that makes to no sense at all. And therefore, adding up the profit margin isn't going to be useful to us. So in that case, what is the profit margin for a whole region? The parameter that we're looking for, the parameter that we want to add to our visualization. Well, let's get rid of um, these calculated columns. And the profit margin for the whole region is, it's, it's quite intuitive that the whole profit margin for the whole region is actually uh, the division of these two numbers. So 80 divided by 650. So the profit made in the whole region divided by the uh, sales made in the whole region. So 80 divided by 650 gives us 12% or 0 0.12. And that is the number we're after. So how do we get to that number? Well, this is our profit margin. And in uh, Power BI, this calculation is actually called a calculated measure. So we're taking um, two columns and we're dividing them one by the other, but after the aggregation. So this is the main difference between calculated columns and calculated measures. Calculated columns are uh, calculated before the aggregation, so at the row level, whereas calculated measures are calculated after the aggregation has occurred. And also as a consequence of that, calculated columns, once you've calculated them, they're stored inside your data set. They're stored inside your, uh, just alongside of the rows that you got originally. Whereas calculated measures, they are calculated every time you uh, recreate your visualization or you recalculate your visualization. So they're not actually stored in your data set. They are a dynamic thing that gets calculated on the fly when it is required. So that's the main difference. And hopefully uh, this explanation made it a bit more uh, a bit easier to understand, it's a bit clearer now. And now let's go back to the visualization and uh, perform a calculated measure and add it to our chart. So uh, here we are, and now let's go ahead and uh, create a calculated measure. So basically just right click anywhere here um, and select uh, new measure. And here you've got measure over there appears. Now say, so type in profit margin equals first perform the aggregation on the first column that we're interested in which is profit so make sure that uh, data set pops up so close the aggregation divided by the aggregation of the second column we're interested in which is uh, sales again make sure the data set pops up and close the aggregation and click enter there we go now we have profit margin here and as you can see the icon is a bit different to what we had uh, when we were creating calculated um, columns. All right, so now we're going to take profit margin and we're going to drag it onto color saturation. Uh, and now we're going to adjust the colors. We're going to data colors. And here, minimum is going to be red. Maximum is going to be, uh, let's select, I don't know, let's select maybe a blue. I wanted a blue. I want a blue. That's a bit too neon, I think. Something like that. So there we go, we've got red and blue. And the beauty of this calculation is that it is dynamic and therefore as we drill into our visualization, as we've learned previously, um, this calculation will update to the correct level of granularity. So watch this, we're going to move to, um, let's go back here. So we're going to move, we're at country level right now, we're going to move to state level. So as I expand to the next level, you'll see that it's been recalculated. And now our profit margin is calculated at the state level. You can even go a little further down, go to the level of a city. Yes, it's a very cluttered, but as you zoom in, uh, there'll be more space and you can see here uh, the profit margins for uh, the cities and uh, you can also see the sales, which is represented by the size of the bubble. So probably let's go back up to uh, the state level. That should be sufficient for us. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's how calculated measures work in uh, Power BI. And, uh, and that's how they're different to calculated columns. So the main things to remember are that calculated columns are uh, calculated at the row level and they're actually stored in the data set. 
calculated measures are calculated after the aggregation has been performed. And as a consequence, they are not stored in the data set, but rather calculated on the fly whenever uh, the visualization is updated. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Until then, happy analyzing.